Exam time can be super stressful, especially if you're aiming high. If you want to get like top marks, A's, A stars, or eights and nines in your GCSEs, A levels, or whatever you're taking, if you want to do really well in your top subjects, your favorite subjects, you can kind of get overwhelmed and you might spend way too long studying and you might be kind of ineffective and um, it can be just a hard time if you don't know the best ways to study. But the fact is, that the best ways to study actually result in you not studying that long, no long sessions or cramming or anything like that, and they can be fun as long as you know what you're doing. And that is what this video is all about. I'm gonna teach you the fun, effective, and efficient techniques so you can ace your exams, whatever you're taking. My name's Ben, I am not a teacher, I'm not, uh, although I was a teacher for a while, but no, I, at the moment I'm not a teacher, I'm not actually in formal education anymore, but, so using these techniques, back when I was studying, I aced a lot of my GCSEs, getting 100% in a lot of subjects. I aced my A-levels, getting 100 out of 100 in um, English, uh, language, literature, psychology. And then I went on to go through the Oxford interview process, aced that, and then used the same techniques um, at Oxford, where I spent three years in the beautiful Oriel College. Um, so I wanna pass these techniques on to you. And what's funny is, Actually, I used these tips to pull myself up during my GCSE stage when I was a teenager from failing almost across the board. And although most of my grades at the end were A's and A stars back when England was using that system, um, there were subjects where I only got like B's, like for maths, for example. Um, there was a, a couple of subjects where I was just set to fail. Like I was pulling a D consistently in geography and I ended up getting an A star and like 100% marks. And this happened a few times with different subjects. And I tell you what, I am more proud of the Bs that I achieved than some of the A stars. For example, English comes very naturally to me. So I didn't really use these study techniques for English. However, when I was failing maths, and like, if you know me, I cannot get my head around basic numbers, still can't do my multiplications. I was so proud that I got a top B in maths using these techniques. I was very proud that I pulled myself up from, yeah, basically maybe even dropping out of school. And then I found this really effective, these techniques, after graduating Oxford, I went on to put it into my day-to-day -day life because learning is like a lifelong journey. I use some of these techniques for like language learning and other things I wanna learn. It's basically, if you know how to study properly, not only are you gonna ace your exams, but it's just gonna improve your life generally. So, that sounds good to you. You wanna do really well in your exams, you wanna ace them. Uh, let's get into the tips. Now, we're not reinventing the wheel here. A lot of this is gonna be quite intuitive. You're gonna be like, Hmm, that's obvious, but sometimes we need to know the obvious stuff. We need to have it drilled into us because even if something's obvious, it doesn't mean we're going to do it and take action. So we're going to do some, we're going to talk about some obvious things, but I'm going to give you some other tips as well. And my first tip, and this is one of my favorites, is to study with a buddy who is slightly more serious than you. But back in school, I was a bit of a class clown, uh, always joking about, very easily distracted, and I could just make mischief out of nothing. Um, so this is where the caveat that your buddy should be more serious than you is important. Don't pick a friend who's just gonna dick around with you and like convince you to watch YouTube or like play pranks and shit like that. You need a bit of a geeky friend, like seeing someone else in your peripheral vision, concentrating hard on some task, it makes you feel like you're not alone and it influences you positively. And the good thing with a buddy is that you can take breaks and you, again, you don't feel so alone, but you've got a not like a natural pause in the rhythm of your studies. Like some people will just study endlessly if they're on their own. But if, you, if you're with a buddy, it's like about 30, 40 minutes afterwards, you're gonna naturally start talking to each other. You can have a little five minute study break and even better, you can test each other, which is really cool. So you can turn your study breaks into like review sessions, which is really nice. Um, if you don't have a buddy or you don't have someone who's a bit more serious than you, then no problem. I mean, you can just go on YouTube and there's plenty of these videos like study with me and you can have someone in the background and that works as well. Or you, if maybe your friend is really far away, just use Skype. You can have the Skype running in the background, 
gives an end break. So we're going to study for like 40 minutes and then we'll have a little chat, um, whatever. We'll play a game for five minutes and then we'll back off and we'll go back into our studies. That's my top tip is to study with somebody because um, a lot of time when you're studying alone, it can be quite isolating. So this is a big reason why people will get distracted. They'll pick up their phone, start pro procrastinating. Now let's talk about how you want to structure your studying. Okay, so what you want to do now, this is I'm going to give you an example, but this is a principle. This isn't a hard and fast rule. This is just an idea to get you going. Just say you have one hour. This is how you're going to structure that hour. The first five minutes you are going to review whatever it is you last studied. So if you studied something yesterday or there's an important um, piece of information for a test that you need to get in your head, you're gonna spend five minutes going back over that. Then for the next 45 minutes, you'll be learning new material or ideally going over material that you've already paid attention to in class, um, but you're kind of seeing it as a uh, review for the first time. So 45 minutes. Then at the end, you will have like five minutes, um, 10 minutes where you'll go back over what you've just done. So you, you don't keep going forward with new material, you leave some five minute buffer where you'll go back over. Okay. And then you'll notice, well, hey, that's only 50 minutes. That's right. Then you're going to take a break. You're going to go chill out. You're going to do something um, not related to studying. Maybe you want to watch a YouTube video. I would recommend you go outside and do something. If you have an animal, this is a good time to go play with them, go for a walk, eat something, drink something, talk to somebody, um, something fun, but not super fun. Like don't play a video game and get hooked. Like you only want five to 10 minutes here. So, and a lot of people will think, hey, but I, you know, I've still got some stamina. I'm kind of, even if you're a bit geeky, you might be like getting into your studies a little bit. You should set a timer for the whole time that you're studying, you are studying. And then even if you want to go on, force yourself to take a break. You want to take breaks before you get tired. Okay. And breaks are really good because they help consolidate information. Like your subconscious is still running over it while you're doing other things. Once you've finished your break, come back in for another study session. Just say it's another hour, 45 minutes. And what are you going to do for the first five minutes? You're going to review everything you just did in the previous block, the study block. Then you'll move on to new material. And then at the end, you'll spend five minutes reviewing everything you just did in that block plus the previous one. Then take another break. If you're still good, you're still going, um, come back. And again, you're going to spend the first bit of time reviewing and then you're going to learn new stuff and then you'll review again. Now, the reason I say this is a principle is because you could structure this no matter how much time you have. So maybe you don't have three hours to study. Maybe you have two hours total. Or just say, okay, let's say you've got an hour total. That's how you would structure it with 20 minutes. So you'd have like 15 minutes, you know, five minutes review, 10 minutes like new material or something like that. Um, and then you take a break. And then when you come back, review, new material, review, okay? The most important thing to remember, this is a philosophy for your entire life, is input is crap. Retention is king. It doesn't matter how much stuff you can put in your head. None of it matters if you don't remember it. So you need to maximize reviewing, okay? There's something called the primacy recency effect. Um, it basically means we're more likely to remember those things at the beginning and at the end. And then the middle gets kind of lost. So we need to keep reviewing. We need lots of beginnings and lots of ends. That's why you break up your studies into chunks. If you go to an interview for a job, you better hope that you're the first or the last because that will be the easiest way to make an impression and be remembered. Um, so give yourself lots of beginnings, lots of ends and review. Okay. No matter how long your study and session is, break it up like that. Chunks, maximize reviewing. All right. Yeah. So a quick tip, actually you can study smarter, not longer. So a lot of students will say, yeah, I studied eight hours today. Like this used to happen in Oxford quite a lot. People go to the library. Whew, I was in the library for 10 hours. Okay, how much of that time were you spent studying, actually studying? I would bet it's 30 minutes tops. Because I've seen these students, they're like dicking around, they're making jokes, they're watching videos, they're texting, shit like that. And they're not actually studying. Now the thing is you can cut down your study time and not burn yourself out and be exhausted by actually when you're studying, 
you're studying. So like one to two hours of actual focused studying where you are on the material is way better than eight hours where your focus is all, you know, in different directions and all that sort of thing. Top tip, turn this stupid thing off. Turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode, throw it away, smash it, give it to a friend who doesn't like you and wants to steal from you, whatever. Just get it out of your fucking vision, right? You don't need this in your life while you're studying. It's very distracting. Actually, today, people are more distracted than ever with Instagram, TikTok, all these notifications beeping at your phone 24 seven. So what you'll find is it's actually really difficult to just say, yo, I'm gonna study for 40 minutes and that's all I'm gonna do. But the more you exercise this and practice it, the better you'll get. And then the better you get, the more you'll look like a superhero, like some freak of nature. Like your, your fellow um, friends, your peers will be like, Wait a minute, you barely even study. You only study like an hour or something. I, I don't see you studying. How are you acing your exams? How are you getting 100%? It's because you've practiced how to focus. Small time with um, great focus, way better than dispersed focus, long time. So try and practice this as often as you can. If Even on those days where you've got a day off, if you can spare 30 minutes to an hour where you're just going to practice focusing on one thing, this is going to be something that strengthens your brain and will benefit you for the rest of your life, especially with uh, the way technology is going. Like in 10 to 20 years, I don't know what the state of humanity is going to look like, but if you can focus on one thing, you're going to be such a valuable asset to everybody in your life. What I recommend is even on days off, if you can set a timer for 30 minutes and focus on a book, all right? Or maybe you're learning a language, you're learning something, or you're playing a, a game of chess. You focus with no distraction, no looking at your phone or anything like that. This is a very valuable thing to do. Another thing you want to do is um, work, reward, work, reward. All right, we're just like rats, basically. Like you know, you put a rat in a box, and like if it hits a lever, it gets a sugar, a bit of sugar come out of a drip or something like that, so it keeps hitting the lever. Like condition yourself to. Do work because you've learned that you'll get something good because of it. I think positive reinforcement is one of the best motivators, not negative. So like, if you don't do this, you'll get hit with a stick. That doesn't work. If you do this, you get a carrot. Actually not a carrot, because we're not like a horse or whatever, but like, you know what I mean? So you could get really unhealthy with this, but I know some people would be like, oh, if I read five pages of my textbook, I get a square of chocolate. I'm not saying that's a particularly good idea, but you can mix it up. Like, oh, if I read five um, pages of my textbook, I get to watch this YouTube video, or I get to spend some time on Instagram. Like, use the stuff that would normally distract you as a reward. So you get to do these things once you've done the work. Structure your work like that. And, you know, maybe you've got, like, um, different goals. So, like, give yourself rewards that are, like, match the scale of the goal. So maybe there's a new pair of shoes that you really want to buy. Well, I don't know. Make sure that you've set a limit for your study for two weeks. Like, say you're going to do a whole module in this subject that you have to study for, and you're going to be able to write out uh, the main points, something like that. And if you can do that after two weeks, boom, you get the shoes. Or maybe if you, I don't know, set a study goal and you hit it, then you get to go to the cinema with your friends. Like, and make sure that you're, you're strict with yourself. If you don't hit the goals, you don't do it. Okay, otherwise it won't work. All right, this is gonna sound super obvious, but you need to make a attack plan, like a, a battle plan, all right? And you wanna attack your weakest subjects first and give disproportionate energy to them. For example, I was way weaker in maths and science than I was in English or languages, anything like that. So, Obviously, I'm going to structure my study time to, to reflect that. So beginning of study time, when you're fresh, okay? Maths, all right? <laughs> and then you wanna do it more frequently as well, because this is the troublesome subject. So more frequency, do it when you're fresh, and uh, do more of it, okay? That sounds super simple. But what you really need to do, this is what I do, print off a big calendar, it might be like a monthly calendar, and then for each day, just put like, if you can afford to do this, I would say two subjects main. I mean, you might be able to do more in a day, but two you want to focus on. Um, and then you'll see on a monthly, 
level, like how much focus you're giving to each subject. So like for me, in a week, I would want to see maths and science a lot more than I'd see English or, you know, history or something like that. You know what I mean? All right, another technique for you to learn faster is called the Feynman technique. Now there's a great video on this that I'm gonna link in the description down below so you can learn more. But the basic principle is this. When you learn something new, write out the concept in the most simple way that you can. Like imagine you're explaining it to a five-year-old or you're explaining it to your nan or you're explaining it to a friend who knows nothing about the subject, no prior knowledge. What does that mean? That means you can't use technical words, no jargon, no like big scary uh, theoretical language that most people wouldn't understand. That means you have to break it down so simply that a complete moron would understand these concepts. And if you cannot do it, you have to go back to the subject and keep revisiting it until you can get it down in its most simplest part. Maybe you wanna draw pictures as well and stuff like that, but simple language. If you can explain something to someone who like explain it like they're five years old successfully, you have understood the idea, okay? So that's the goal. The moment you can put it into very, very simple words is the moment that you've integrated it and understood it. Uh, here's another super simple one and people aren't gonna like this, but you can absolutely cut your study time in half easily overnight by doing this one simple hack. And the hack is this, listen in class. Like, I know, I, ne I never used to really do this for a long time, that's why I was failing across the board, but the moment I started listening in class, and at Oxford, the moment I started going to le lectures, was the moment that my comprehension shot forward. Never again did I have this problem where I would come to material and like be scratching my head like I don't get this. When you listen in class as well, make sure you are an active student, not a passive student. What does an active student mean? That means you are taking notes. That means you're writing down questions that occur to you. That means you're engaging with the teacher. Put your hand up, ask them questions, interact as much as possible. The more you interact with the material as you're learning it, the more you will remember it. Like it will hook on and uh, make little sticky memories and shit like that, okay? And here's another thing as well. Make your teachers work for you. They work for you. That means if you don't understand something, it is both of your obligations to fix that. It's your obligation to bring it to their attention and it's their obligation to help you. Be an absolute pest. Bug the shit out of your teachers. Like if you want something explained, use them. That is what they're there for and a lot of students don't do this. So you're tapping into a resource that most students are too scared to get into anyway. And most teachers will be quite thankful for this. So really, really use your teachers to the absolute fullest extent. Another thing you can do is just get study guides. Like I recommend in England, the CGP books. Um, if you learn everything in your subject from a CGP book, if you just learned the whole book, you would ace your exams if you knew all the material. These books rule because they're, firstly, they're really colorful. There's a nice, funny, approachable tone. They break down difficult concepts in easy to understand ways. And they're just they're nice books. They're not even huge. Like they're better than a textbook. Um, just do that, learn it all. Or there's a website called Schmoop. Um, you can get some study guides. Like honestly, the only reason, not the only reason, but the big reason I got through my Oxford interview so well is because I just read study guides about the books that I was gonna talk about. And I just like kind of downloaded the main themes and talking points into my head. It was brilliant. And then I sailed through. A lot of people think, oh, is this cheating? It's not cheating. The whole industry exists in tandem with the educational industry to make you smarter. So absolutely use and abuse these study guides. Learn as much as you possibly can from them. They're fantastic. Another little hack you can do is to just do practice papers over and over and over again. Once you've learnt your material for one subject or one module, one topic, once or twice you've gone over it, there's not much point endlessly going over it. Don't be going through your textbook highlighting constantly, it's pointless. Once you've got the grasp and you've used the Feynman technique to write down the explanation like, like you're explaining to a five-year-old, go get some practice papers and that is your job from now on. You are now using the knowledge you've put in and that the benefit of this is when you get into the exam hall, a lot of exam nerves are just because the idea of taking an exam is quite foreign. It's not something you're used to. So we're like, oh God, we've got to navigate this paper and you know, understand these questions and stuff. Get practice doing that. 
because then you'll be one of those students that get in there and you're like, boom, this is business time. Like I, am, I know how to read the question. By the way, I'm gonna tell you, to read the question, when you get into the exam hall, um, you're gonna read the question, I would say at least three times before you even attempt to answer it. Once will be a quick one, okay? You probably won't get a lot in, you'll be nervous or whatever. Second is a thorough, okay? You're gonna really pay attention to it. The third, even annotate it. Write notes around the question, break it down, underline shit like that, okay? Read it many, many times. Don't dive into answering it, make some notes first, uh, really think out how you're gonna answer it. But anyway, in your study time, I think you've got your textbooks here, that's great, your study materials are your textbooks. You've got your study buddy over there who's motivating you, egging you on, and you've also got a stack of past papers, and you're taking them. So make it a goal each day to take a new past paper, and then go through the marking scheme and figure out where you went wrong, and you'll see patterns. You'll see basically the same questions get asked all the time, and even if the questions look different, they're kind of the same because they're trying to get you to explain the same concept. So, past papers for the win. Another little hack, okay, when you're writing an essay, you want to remember, and this is super simple, I'm sure teachers already drilled it into you, but I didn't learn the importance of this until I got into Oxford, my final year. You want to pee all over your work. Now, that doesn't mean you have some sort of attitude problem with the educational establishment and you urinate on your work. It means pee, point, example, explanation. This is a magical formula for everything. When you're writing something, your opening sentence is your point. What point are you making? What are you gonna talk about? Then you give an example. You back up your point with something someone else says or some proof, some evidence. Explanation, that means you just riff on it a bit more, expand it. Always structure your answers like this. P, point, example, explanation. You'll get good marks just from doing that alone. Like even if you don't get the question fully right, this is a very, very good, sophisticated way to structure your answers. Another thing, we're coming to the end of this now, but I want to make this known to you, is if you have coursework, get on top of it ASAP. The thing is, like, a lot of things can go wrong in the exam halls, you can have a bad day, but with coursework you have a lengthy amount of time, you have teacher involvement, and you, there is really, to be honest, no excuse for getting anything less than 100% in your coursework. And if you get 100% in your coursework, you can walk into that exam feeling like there's, there's less weight on your shoulders because you've already got some marks in the bank. So that's another tip. Don't procrastinate on coursework. Get that done and then move on to studying for your exams. Um, the final tip is before exam day. A lot of people will cram. They'll like try and learn new material, try and review other material that they've already learned. They'll stress themselves out. No, if you've studied correctly, the only thing you need to do before exam day is to relax. There is no studying the day before exam day. This is a relaxation day. You do whatever you need to get yourself all loose and relaxed. Exercise, hang out with friends, watch some cool movies, take a relaxing bath, whatever, and get a good night's sleep. Eat a lot of healthy food, and um, yeah, you are there to, your job is to chill the day before the exam. So those are my main tips for how to ace your exams. I hope you found something useful there. Um, if you want some more advice or something specific, peculiar to your situation, feel free to leave a comment, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and happy studies.